Hi there fellow guitar slingers, Josh Rogers here. Welcome to my Power Amp Tube tutorial. This tutorial is going to be in four sections. The first three sections are three questions. The first question is, what do tubes do? The second question, what are triodes, tetrodes and pentodes? Third question, what Power Amp tube types are in the AX8? And what are their real world counterparts? I'll also let you know what some of the examples of the, the real world amps are. That some of the models inside the AX8 are based upon. The fourth section or the last section is just a little discussion to dispel some of the myths about the influence that power tube type has on your overall sound. To put it simply, tubes convert alternating current AC to direct current DC by boiling electrodes inside a vacuum. That's what they do. If you've been around the guitar amp world, you would have undoubtedly heard these words being bandied around. But let's break it down. Triodes, tetrodes and pentodes are basically all the same thing. Let's look at the triode. Triodes have three major components in them. Three electrodes, they have a cathode, anode and a control grid. The most famous one is the dual triode tube, which is the 12AX7. If you've heard of any type of tube, it's usually the 12AX7. Tetrode adds another control grid to the triode that's introduced to reduce the Miller effect and to accelerate the electron flow. While we're touching on tetrodes, there's another type of tetrode called the audio beam tetrodes and they have guide plates that string the electrons on either side of the cathode. The most famous examples of tetrodes are the 6L6 and 6550 pentodes and as you may have guessed by now they add yet another control grid to capture any stray secondary emission electrons. Secondary emission electrons are electrons that maybe bounce off one of the other electrodes inside the tube and they can they can wreak a bit of havoc and in particular they can reduce the overall lifespan of your tube which you, you want to try to keep your tubes lasting as long as they can because they can be quite expensive. Before I finish this, let's pay homage to John Ambrose Fleming, the English physicist who was responsible for developing tubes in 1904. Yeah, big ups to you bro, thanks a lot. You've amplified the world and given countless generations of guitarists lots of fun. Let's just have a look at the amp block. So we've selected an amp and let's move down to effect type. When you select an amp, you're going to be confronted with this screen. I'm just going to brush through it pretty quickly because I do have this laid out in one of my other tutorials, which you can check out. I'll leave the link below in the description. But let's say we've chosen the CA Triptych Clean. If you move across to the Power Amp setting, scroll down Basic, GEQ, Preamp, and then click on Power Amp, and this parameter screen is going to come up. If you look down the bottom, you're going to see Power Tube Types, and that's exactly what this tutorial is based around. If we scroll down the pages, we have basic, GEQ, preamp, power amp. Click on power amp and you will see a distinctive set of parameters come up. We're going to be concerning ourselves with the power tube type parameter here. Let's click on this box and you'll see a drop down menu appear with a list of all the selectable tubes that we have at our disposal in the AX8. Let's move up to the first one, the 6AQ5. The 6AQ5 also has another designation known as EL90. It's an example of the beam tetrode vacuum tube that I was talking about a little bit earlier on. Its ratings are virtually identical to the 6V6, this tube here. Examples of real world counterparts are the early Fender Music Master bass amps, the Gibson GA5 Crestline. Let's look for an amp inside the AX8 that has that and it's the Gibtone Scout. Let's move across here. If we click on 133, you see 6 AQ5 comes up. Let's move on to the 6L6 5881. That was seen in the big Fender Tone amps and made in America. It's known for firm lows and prominent highs. The Fender Tweed Basement, early Marshall JTM 45s, Mesa Boogie Mark series, etc. They all had the 6L6 5881 tubes inside them. Inside the AX8, the example that we can look for is the 5153 50 watt. The 6V6. The 6V6 commonly associated with the Tweed amps from the 50s and 60s, the Fender Champ, Princeton, Deluxe and the Gibson GA40 Les Paul. Inside the AX8 we can choose like the Prince Tone NR 
and the Deluxe Tweed. There's a number of different choices. The 300B is an interesting one. It's not actually inside the AX8 amp models. Uh, I couldn't find it. I've gone through several times and I can see it. If anybody out there finds it, please let me know. However, the 300B is one of the earliest tube types from 1938 and it's a triode vacuum tube, commonly associated with the Sophia boutique amps and those amps are known for being warm, natural and colorful. The 6550 used in Marshall amps from the mid 70s to the mid 80s and it sounds like a bigger 6L6. Commonly associated with the Alessandro and Engels, also bass amps, Ampeg's SVT, inside the AX8, the Angle Severe, the Angle Severe 2. The 6973 is associated with uh, the 1965 Airline Falco and the Good Cell Valpro. Inside the AX8 you could look for the Supremo Trim over here, number 211. The EL34 and 6CA7. This is associated with the British crunch tone from the 1960s onwards. Fat and juicy with a soft low end and nice sort of sizzly bacon frying type highs. Associated with the Marshall JMP50, the High Watt, Rivera, VHT. Inside the AX8, Wrecker Express is using this. There's a number of amps inside the AX8 that use the EL34. Wrecker Express is just one that I've chosen. EL84 6BQ5. This is uh, really associated with the Vox AC15 and AC30. Matchless, Top Hat, Dr. Z. It's known to be chimey, sparkly highs, crunchy, chunky mid-range when you push it. The AX8, you can find it with the Wrecker Liverpool. And also the AC20. Ideal Pentode and Ideal Tetrode, I'm going to deal with both of those at the same time. The Ideal Pentode is not used in any of the amps inside the AX8. The Ideal Tetrode is, and it's used with the Jazz 120. There we see, the Jazz 120 uses the Ideal Tetrode. I'm going to take a little bit of time to explain what this is. The Ideal Tetrode is used if you're using an external preamp, it's flat response when all the controls are set at noon, but that's the suggested usage if you're using an external preamp. The KT66, think Dr. Z's Route 66, early 60s Marshall JTM 45s. This tube is the European substitute for the 6L6. It's often said that it's a bit bolder, firmer, fatter, and is able to put out a bit more volume. Inside the AX8, you can look for the Herbie amps. And you can see they use the KT66. KT88, these are also beam tetro tubes that can be used in place of the 6L6, 5881, and also the EL34. Its real world counterparts include the Spawn Nitro, Orange Thunderbird. Inside the AX8, check out the CA Tucana Clean and the CA Tucana Lead. Finally, we have a discussion about the influence that the power tube selection has on your overall tone. One of the popular myths and misconceptions that is around the guitar amp world is that power tubes have their own inherent sound. Actually, they don't really have their own intrinsic tone. What I think that's been mistaken for down through the years is that when you're changing power tubes between pentode and tetrode in the same amp, what's actually happening is that you're changing the distortion curves. Well, the reason why they may yield different sounds is for the fact that if you swap between different tube types without changing the gain of the phase inverter or changing the output transformer, you're going to get a different type of sound coming through. I think the birth of this was occurring when the amps were being swapped between America and England, different voltages and so on. You know, guys might have been plugging them in and just before they exploded <laughs> with the different voltages, they may have yielded a, an amazing tone. That's possibly why people were thinking, oh man, you know, the, the tone from one of those tubes just about to blow up is is, you know, exactly the kind of tone that I want and so you know you've had guitarists experimenting with power sag and changing the output transformers and that kind of thing to to yield a different type of tone you know more hot rodded or warmer or or whatever it may be to that particular listener it's all subjective but at the end of the day part of it could have come from marketing you know the manufacturers trying to say that 
this tube has a particular tone. A lot of the, the change in the tone could actually come from the speaker. One of the facets that may have led to this type of thinking, a speaker is a highly reactive load. As such, the power tube will react differently according to the impotence of each speaker. I hope you've really enjoyed this tutorial. If you've gained any knowledge or learned something today along this journey, please give my video a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with everything that I'm doing, please subscribe to my channel. As you know, let your fingers fly.